Welcome back to Roadies Roam the World, where our adventures take us to Kennedy Space Center, a place where I've wanted to go since I was a little kid. Make sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned to the end where we have some outtakes from our day at Kennedy. Upon entry, you are treated to a pretty amazing video display that looks 3D throughout much of the display. As the music fades, we sit back and take in a preview of what we are about to see that includes an astronaut coming out to greet the kids as the complex opens promptly at 9 o'clock. As soon as you walk through the main entrance, your visit starts in grand fashion with the height and grandeur of the Rocket Garden. The first rocket you come to is the Mercury Atlas rocket, an example of what propelled the last four launches of the Mercury program starting with John Glenn's launch in February 1962. Walking up the ramp to the Heroes and Legends exhibit that we will explore later, we get a better look at the Atlas Redstone rocket used to send the first two Americans into a 15-minute suborbital trip starting with Alan Shepard in May 1961 and then Gus Grissom later that July. As we stroll through the garden, it's not easy to miss the Saturn 1B rocket in the back. This two-stage, 223-foot tall rocket is the predecessor of the larger Saturn V rocket used in the Mercury Moon program and could carry a payload up to 46,000 pounds using its 2 million pounds of thrust. This series of rocket was used in the early stages of the Apollo program, including Apollo 1, 5, and 7, and then later for the Skylab project starting in 1973. The example in front of us, number SA-209, was used as a standby rocket for Skylab 4 and 5, but was unused and is now on display to awe at its size. The garden features many other rockets, including one from the Gemini program that followed Mercury, used to launch two Americans into space together. The Atlas Agena rocket, Juno 1 and 2 rockets, and the Delta 1 and 2 rockets typically used to launch satellites into orbit. Continuing through the garden, the size of the F-1 engine that powered the Saturn V rocket for the Apollo Moon Project is undeniable. Five of these engines would propel the rocket to 6,000 miles per hour and contribute to the loudest man-made noise ever, second only to a nuclear bomb explosion. All five engines would produce 7.5 million pounds of thrust and just one of these engines is more powerful than all three engines on the future space shuttle combined. Before leaving the garden, I just had to play around a little bit with an example of the tiny Mercury capsule. Well, since there isn't anybody else around and I won't look like a weirdo, I decided to get into one of the Mercury capsules. And it is not made for somebody my size. You can see the mock-up of the control panels and I can't even sit down not even close there you can see what I was just in that's the one of the mercury 7 
capsules not much bigger than a couple of foam booths and it was the Mercury 7 the original seven astronauts but that only went into space six times because Deke Slayton didn't end up going up As I start my short walk over to the Explorer bus tour, we get a quick look at the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit and the colossal size of the external fuel tank and the solid rocket boosters that would launch the Space Shuttle into orbit. We will visit that tomorrow. The Explorer bus tour is an add-on attraction that will take you up close to the vehicle assembly building and some of the launch platforms with stops along the way for pictures. Your first stop is an observation tower that while too close to use to see a launch, gives you a bird's eye view of Cape Canaveral and the history making launch sites. Although we are currently on launch complex 39, we are way too close to these two launch pads for the rockets that launch from here. You would not be able to watch a launch from this area. However, for everything down to the south, this is a great place to watch from. Launchpad 39A saw use during most of the Apollo Moon Project, the Space Shuttle Program, and is now leased and being used by SpaceX. It just amazes me to look out over the Cape and see all the places where so much history was made and continues to be made. From the Mercury Project, to Gemini, to Apollo, to Skylab, the Space Shuttle Program, countless satellite launches that enhance and power our world of today, to current endeavors such as SpaceX, Blue Origin, and the new Artemis Program that will take us back to the moon in the coming years. It is a lot to take in, and I am humbled by the magnitude of what takes place here. While Launchpad 39B saw some Apollo launches, the bulk of its launches were of that of the Space Shuttle. Beginning with the tragedy of Challenger in January 1986, the pad went on to see 53 successful shuttle missions and will now be used for the Artemis program. The gravel roads you see are for the large crawler machine that moves the rockets to either of the two main launch pads. Fully loaded, the crawler moves at one half mile per hour and unloaded cranks up to a blazing two miles per hour. As the tour continues, another quick stop sees a bird's eye view of launch pad 39B and the commemoration of its launches. The Atlantic Ocean is at your back to the east.
our tour guide said that the water tower you see is used to dump 400,000 gallons of water into the flame trench during a launch in just 30 seconds. It helps with sound suppression and the pressure so that the launch will not tear the vehicle apart. When you see that plume of white coming from underneath the rockets, it is actually steam from all that water being flash boiled. I never knew that. That future for 39B is in the Artemis program that is scheduled to take us back to the moon. Artemis 1 launched from here in November 2022 as a test of the new rocket. The manned flight of Artemis 2 is scheduled for late 2025 and will be a dress rehearsal for Artemis 3, which will be a crewed lunar landing on target for 2026. This is the vehicle assembly building. Our guide said that flag is 21 stories tall. And I'll show you a comparison here in a second. So this flag is here to show it is a one-to-one -one scale of how big that American flag is there. That's crazy. So what everybody is walking across here, this is the actual walkway that the Apollo astronauts would have used. It was up on the pad and they would walk on this to get to the rocket. This is the actual one. actually me walking across it and I don't like myself on camera but this is pretty cool closest I'll ever be to being an astronaut Come back next time as we finish up day one over at the Apollo and Saturn V rocket exhibit. Remember to like and subscribe, and thanks for joining us. In fact, now I gotta figure out how to get out of here. I made it, but that was a pain.